Good afternoon, my dear family members of Our Lady of the Woods, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and all God's people of goodwill. This is my weekly parish address here at Our Lady of, Woods, of the Woods on this Monday. And June 1st, we've begun a new month. This is the feast today, or a memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. On February 11, 2018, Pope Francis, through the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, inscribed this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and it is the memorial to be celebrated every year on the Monday after Pentecost. Mary, Mother of the Church, was officially given to Mary during the Second Vatican Council by Pope Paul VI and was first used in the 4th century by St. Ambrose of Milan. John Paul II, St. John Paul II, stated that the overall title indicates the Blessed Virgin Mary's maternity of Christ faithful as deriving from her maternity of Christ in that Mary is present in the Church as the Mother of Christ, and at the same time as that mother whom Christ, in the mystery of the redemption, gave to humanity in the person of the Apostle John. So when we hear in the Gospel today from John 19, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple John, Behold your mother. And that's what we're called to today. And I ask the intercession of Mary, the mother of the church, to help us. Because in her new motherhood in the spirit, Mary embraces each and every one of us in the church and embraces each and every one through the church. And so let us take a moment to pray through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, mother of the church. Gracious and loving God, during these moments and times of challenge and frustration, through these moments of joy, but also confusion, of sadness, but also anxiety, we come to you, Lord, through the intercession of Mary, Mother of the Church. Guide us, give us courage, give us hope in these moments, in these times, in this time of strife, in these moments of hatred that seems to be around, and division, that we find that through celebrating Pentecost, the fruit of your spirit called peace. So bless each of our hearts, each of our homes and families, the parish of Our Lady of the Woods, our church, our nation, and the world. And we ask this intercession of Mary, Mother of the Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it was so good to see some of you physically in the last two weekends here at Our Lady of the Woods in church. My heart goes out to all of you, those who are physically present and those who are on our live stream social media. Be assured of my continued prayers and love. We have a few announcements. I've asked the pastoral council members of our parish, along with the parish finance members, to stay on for the upcoming academic year, at least until June 30th, 2021. I'm asking both the Pastoral Council and the Parish Finance Committee to stay on, even if their terms um, might have, uh, at this point, uh, terminated or, or they're up for, you know, uh, a new appointment or whatever. But I really think it's in the best interest of the parish at this point to ask the Pastoral Council and the Parish Finance members to stay on during these times. So they have all very graciously agreed to continue in their ministries at least until June 30th, 2021. I think it's good for stability purposes and continuity in our parish life. Number two, you might have heard by now the Archbishop's plan called Families of Parishes. Um, it's a lot to kind of take in, to pray about. I want to encourage you to go to the actual website that's at www.familiesofparishes.org. And you'll see what um, the Archbishop is trying to explain and, and share with us. Um, first of all, the goal, to renew our parishes so they can become places, places where individuals and families encounter Jesus and grow as missionary disciples. The plan, 
to respond in faith to the challenges we face and to take the necessary steps to better equip our parish communities for mission, our resolve, to advance with unshakable conviction of the truth of the gospel and a love that compels us to share the good news with those around us. And so what are families of parishes? All parishes of the Archdiocese of Detroit will join other parishes in new groupings called Families of Parishes, working together and sharing resources and talents to further advance our shared mission. I'm sure you have heard by now, either through the Archbishop um, through myself, through other uh, means, social media, that the clergy, uh, in regards to numbers, has actually been on the decline. I know that's not a new surprise for any of us here, but certainly in the next couple of years, many of the pastors are turning 70, and many of them um, are at the retirement stage. And so there are these great numbers of retiring priests where we do not have the same amount of young priests coming in. So certainly it's about how do we best manage our clergy in regards to how do we best utilize them to um, serve all of you and to serve the people of the Archdiocese. So it's going to be looking at how we best bring forth um, in utilizing our clergy and other resources and you'll hear about it more and more as it goes. There's a lot about it. You can read it. It's on this website that I just shared with you. It's also on our own parish social website. Um, if you go to Our Lady of the Woods, um, our website, or you go to Our Lady of the Woods, our Facebook page, and just kind of take it in and read about it. Things will continue to develop as we go. By Advent of 2020, we'll have a better sense of what this actual structure looks like, families of parishes, and we'll then uh, learn which, uh, in our own case, our own parish will belong to which families of parishes. So as we go along, pray for that endeavor, pray for the Holy Spirit, uh, keep looking and going to this website, again, www.familiesofparishes.org, and you can always keep in touch and keep updated by looking at our own social media on that. The Archbishop also wrote a letter um, on May 29th. Um, I won't read the whole thing, but it's, Dear Brothers and Sisters in Christ, Over the past two months I have witnessed with sorrow the effect the current pandemic has had, particularly on the black community here in the Archdiocese of Detroit. It has been painful to hear daily of how the virus is impacting pastors, parish staff, and friends and family of the faithful here, and of the ensuing fear and anxiety that has followed in its wake since. And now compounding this suffering, as one of the faithful put it to me, that deep, familiar, and soul-crushing ache which the death of George Floyd has reawakened. I know that while physically distant, the events in Minneapolis have cut deep into existing wounds held close to your own hearts. And so the Archbishop goes on to you know, offer sincere reassurance and expression of solidarity within our Catholic community. And I would invite you to read it. It's also posted, the rest of the letter, um, on the Archdiocesan website, along with our own parish website. I'll close with what he closed with in um, his letter. I hope, too, that you will join me in praying for two additional petitions at this time. First and foremost is for the blessed repose for George Floyd, and for comfort for his grieving family and friends. Second is for peace, both in our communities and in our hearts. Entrusting you to the intercession of Blessed Solanus Casey, I am sincerely yours in Christ, the Most Reverend Ellen H. Vigneron, Archbishop of Detroit. And we remembered also uh, the same petitions at Mass this last weekend. So I would encourage you to uh, keep aware, keep praying, um, keep abreast of all that's going on uh, in those challenging times and moments. I'd like to remind you that we have this wonderful thing called form.org, which we'll, we will be renewing July 1st. Uh, there's all kinds of great programs on there. Um, right now, the one that I'm suggesting you zero in on is called a, a series, The Search. The Search is seven beautifully filmed episodes. Chris Stefanik and experts from multiple fields of science, medicine, psychology, art, 
and religion examine our place in the larger story of life. What a gift this is. This series is so powerful, one viewer said, that it's perfect to speak to our culture today, yet stirs each individual soul. So I again encourage you, we have subscribed to form.org. We will um, renew our subscription July 1st. And it is a wonderful place to find good Catholic quality material. So please take advantage of this part of your faith formation, whether you're a more mature adult growing in the stages of that time of life, whether you're younger, there's something for everyone. I will begin a new series called Take Five. I have already written 10 parishioners with five questions I want them to answer. Once a week, uh, the parishioner and myself will come on. Each week it will be a different guest, and they will answer those five questions. Sometimes we'll get through all of them, sometimes we won't. But it's just a, a, another way to stay connected as a parish as we look at this take five. Take five. Take five minutes with your pastor. Take five minutes with one of your parishioners. And again... Let's continue to grow and renew. And it'll be in the format of Zoom. So the guest on the episode will be on Zoom with me and we'll record it, pre-record it, and then show it each week. Uh, this coming week, we will finalize the parish budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, the parish finance committee will meet tomorrow evening along with uh, Patty Berenger, uh, our bookkeeper, and myself. We've also invited the pastoral council members to join us, or if they have questions, to send them in to finalize the parish budget for the next fiscal year. As you know, and with everything that's been going on, there had to be a lot of extra energy and effort put into what would be best reflected, sometimes not knowing definitely what it'll look like in the future. I also um, would like you to, if you're able to come by or, or if you've driven by, sometimes people come and they walk around. Um, there will be some landscaping done in a couple areas. Um, some of it's just to fix the contour of the land, even for cutting grass and all that. So our maintenance department, Don and Paul, are trying to fill in areas that have sunken a little. Uh, we'll be doing a little landscaping. We're moving our memorial for those that have been unborn. Um, and those um, through um, abortion, um, the, the, re the memorial that's out there, we want to move that to a better location. So you'll see some landscaping going on, including uh, one of our Eagle Scouts. So it's an Eagle project for one of our parishioners. He will be looking at where to place 14 stations. Uh, we have two locations we've thought of. Uh, we asked for some feedback from Pastoral Council. And, um, other people. So you'll see some landscaping going on. Um, it won't be extravagant. You won't come and go, oh my gosh, I can't recognize the place. But we'll be doing a few things. So please take notice. And we want to thank you for your efforts and your generosity. I think that's it, except towards the end that I want to wish everyone born in the month of June a happy birthday. So I'm going to sing the happy birthday song for all of the June birthdays of our parish. Here we go. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, June birthdays. Happy birthday, whoa, whoa, whoa. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, June birthdays. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. So many blessings and a grace-filled birthday if you're having a birthday in June. And then I'd also like to send out my best wishes and greetings for all of our married couples in the parish who have their wedding anniversary during the month of June. And I'm going to sing a little song for all of our June wedding couples. God grant you many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many and happy years. And so may the Lord bless you in your married life, no matter how many years. It's a beautiful sign in a world that desperately needs to see your vocation of commitment, 
of sacrifice, of mutual responsibility and communication. So God bless all our married couples in the parish celebrating in the month of June. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Now I'm going to close in a little lighter way. I don't know about you, but I like music from all different genres and sources. Um, every people and culture have what we call folk music. And certainly um, in our different ethnic groups, I don't think we point out one group to separate everyone else, but I think we bring together the joy of music. And, you know, lately, with everything been going on, I mean, you get a little tired. You're a little overwhelmed. I know I am. You want something uplifting. And I want to just join with you in this very short, uplifting beat of a song. It was composed by Nathan Newman from Minnesota. He has his own band. Um, he's a very talented musician. And if you watch any of his videos, Nathan Newman, he's playing all these different instruments that he learned. And most of it's self-taught. I don't know if you're showing him on the screen there a little. Okay, Becky's behind our screen. You can see him a little back there. He's a little older looking right now. He's a few years older than what you see. But he's playing different um different instruments. And, and he basically said he learned them on his own and sometimes from a tutorial on YouTube and all of that. I just want us to finally, at the end of this Monday, you know, address to you, I just want us to feel relaxed, just to let go. Our hearts have been a little weary. We've been overwhelmed. And what better thing to lift us than perhaps calling this a polka day? This is a young man who loves the polka, who wrote this song. And the song is entitled, I Wanna Fly. And just keep in mind this music of I Wanna Fly. Think about the psalm today, Psalm 87 said, And all shall sing in their festive dance, my home is within you. So with everything that we've been going through right now, with the different rallying and sometimes the rioting and the protest and the intensity that's been going on in the air right now, with the pandemic that still is, you know, circling us. I'm not trying to dismiss any of that. I'm just trying to say, let's have a little joy. Let's have a little music. Let's lift ourselves a little in this time. And as scripture says, when we all sing in our festive dance, God says, my home is within you. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, they that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on eagles' wings. They will run and not grow weary, walk and not grow faint. Let's listen to Nathan Newman's I Want to Fly. And if you want to get up and dance a little, let's just lift it all to the Lord and just celebrate a little. Just feel the music and the beat and just feel it in your heart and your soul. I want to fly. I want to soar on eagles' wings. Run and not grow weary. Here we go. Walk and not grow faint. Feel the pulse. And no matter where we're from, we're all in it together. And let's just celebrate and enjoy life. I want to fly on a day where we need something to lift us. I want to fly. Whatever it's on the dance floor. Whatever makes our hearts soar. Whatever we want to let's go. Celebrate life. Whatever is bringing you joy, his words were, let's lift it up. Whatever makes our hearts soar, and whatever we dance for, whenever you feel ready, let's just get up and celebrate. Are you sick and tired of sitting? I am at times. Time to move. Do a little groove. Let's take time to make our hearts soar. Just fly. Fly with hope. Fly with peace. Fly with unity. 
fly as brothers and sisters together as one. We want to fly with God, fly with our Pentecost, the birthday of our church, fly with Mary, the mother of our church. You feel the beat and the rhythm in your feet. Come on. You gotta dance a little and bring it up. And swirl a little. Jump up. Whoa. Feel it. Let's just bring the joy and peace of a life that needs some renewal by the Holy Spirit. Here we go. Feel it. Celebrate your home, your family, your parish, Our Lady of the Woods, the Archdiocese. Celebrate unleashing the gospel. Celebrate families of parishes. We just gotta go. I wanna fly. Woo! Feel it in your bones. Let's fly! And then, just bring that joy, the fruit of the Spirit called joy. Amen. Let's just fly. And whatever dance it is you need to dance, whatever song it is you need to sing, let's just fly. Fly in unity. Fly in peace. Fly with each other as God's people. I was a little constrained behind the desk with this chair behind me, but maybe one day we'll all be able to just to get together after all the social distancing is gone and just dance a dance of faith. God bless you. Have a beautiful week. And just go forward.